Hey y'all, it's Andrew Reed with Mossy Creek Mushrooms, and today I want to show you what we've been working on this week. Come on. First of all, not completely finished, but check this out. Oh, I can feel all that air coming through. This is our new lab. We built it and what was in our old storage room. This is actually our old, our old lab table. Samantha just went through and repainted it and we covered it with a coat of acrylic. We're pretty stoked about it. You can see that there are little, look at that, logo. Mushrooms and beetles. Bees. Fungus farming ants. It's all pretty exciting for us. Don't worry, we'll get that all cleaned up very soon. I hate that. That's actually why the new grow room didn't go here. Speaking of new grow rooms, let's go check that out. Here we go. There's the boards all getting ready to go. Already got the holes tapped in them for the PVC. You all know this walk all too well. Incubation room hasn't changed at all. Got a bunch of loose wiring for now. But here is the old lab where we're now doing the new grow room. Nothing's finished yet. We've gotten that much done over the week. Everything's cut and ready to assemble. Had to move our a bunch of our old shelving out of the way, make this room even more cluttered until we get that mess all tightened up so we can start moving things in here. Let's get you back on the monopod. Now I do have some B-roll of how we assembled some of this. It's all pretty simple, normal construction. We have our plywood shelves covered in paint, We're putting on a layer of acrylic on that so we can cool blocks without getting the racks all wet and splitting apart. The lab table painted that just because we had the chance to, as we were moving it, get it cleaned up, roughed up, primer, paint, and then acrylic, and then we left it just a little bit, I guess, I think Samantha said it was a little bit wet so that we could get it to where it was rough so each one of those little white lines wasn't like super clean. Had a little bit of a grayscale to it. We covered this in the acrylic so that we can alcohol everything down. We considered epoxy, didn't go that route this time. We we're thinking that we might do it on the next iteration. I'm super excited about this lab. It's not like it's that much better than our old lab, but it does at least have positive pressure, just like the old lab did. Has the good table, has way more shelving than what we had. And everything's just been a little bit more purpose built so that it makes life that much easier. Everything's white so that it's brighter in here. We put in new LED lights so that we can see a lot better than the old TV panel that we used to use. Um, Still have a lot more work to go into this place, but overall, this is the new lab reveal. I'm super stoked about this. Beyond that, I had some people asking about the whole word usage that I use about the moss backs, and I just kind of wanted to go in a little bit of history about that really quick. The reason why I call people who work with us moss backs, and even call you guys moss backs, I don't know if you knew that or not, is that this area used to be called Mossy Creek before it was called Jefferson City. 
the old story is, and I have no idea if this is true, I, I, this is just what I was heard in my family going down the generations, is that businessmen used to travel outside of Jefferson City, and or used to travel outside of Mossy Creek at that time, and they would go out to Knoxville, Atlanta, and all these other places, and people would go, where are you from? And they'd go, Mossy Creek, and they thought it was such a silly name, so they would call them Mossbacks. And, Apparently these guys didn't like being called Mossbacks, so eventually, I guess they got enough support going on that they decided they were going to change the name of the town. And they're going to change the name of the town to being something that was so normal that you couldn't possibly make fun of it. So they voted and came up with Jefferson City. So Jefferson City in every state, as far as I know. I don't know that that's absolutely true, but I was up in Missouri a few months ago. I know there's a Jefferson City there. It's much bigger than the one I live in. And so they came up with Jefferson City. How could you possibly make fun of Jefferson, right? I mean, that's that's a, a founder of our republic. So that's the whole story. As far as I know, it's just as simple as that. I prefer Mossy Creek. I like the, the uh, colloquialism of it. This creek that's right behind our house is part of Mossy Creek that runs through our town. And in the summertime, sections of it that get slow absolutely develop, uh, I think it's called Wolfia. It's a, it's a small, I think it's, it's the smallest vascular plant in the world. It grows all over the surface of, of uh, a lot of this area. It makes it really, really green colored, mossy. In the summertime, it doesn't even look like we have a pond out back. That pond just completely covers up and if you take a picture it looks just like a grass hill going down to a flat grass space until you start seeing animals swim through it and you've got branches sticking out of it um, so that's that's pretty much it that's the history of mossy creek mushrooms we took the old name mossy creek for the town and combined it with mushrooms because that's what we farm and made mossy creek mushrooms i call people moss backs who work with us just because i like that colloquialism I enjoy my family and friends. A lot of people call me uh, a swamp monster um, because I love being in the water. I love eating weird foods like oysters and mushrooms and snails and all that kind of stuff. Just pretty much everything about me they call uh, they think reminds them of a swamp monster. So I'm a mossback. Proud of it. Love it. And uh, if you're growing with us, you're mossbacks too. So welcome to the mossback family. Other than that, let's do some B-roll. shout out to Ben Erickson he's one of my business partners and uh, he builds pretty much everything as I've said before in previous videos everyone needs a Ben he's built Thor and Mousetrap our grow room he's building the new grow room he's been building this lab for us and I mean he works a full-time job outside of this and so he really just you know it's it's so amazingly useful to have a partner in all of this who is better with tools than I am better technically than I am. I handle a lot more of the biology and the people-oriented stuff. Ben handles most of my technical aspects, uh, like building equipment and helping me research uh, new equipment for stuff. So if you can, try to partner up with someone who, who matches your talents. You know, I would not have as nice of a lab as I had on the shoestring budget that I have without my one of my you know partners. I wouldn't have a nicely colored desk or half of the aesthetically beautiful things that I have in my life if it wasn't for my aesthetically pleasing wife and uh, business partner Samantha. It's having these partnerships is, is much like the mushrooms work and so when you're building a lab or an op in general 
make sure that you find partners like Ben and Samantha are for me who complement my skill set and bring something to that table. So one of the things to keep in mind whenever you are building a laboratory is that you want positive pressure in your lab. You want filtered air constantly coming in and pushing old air out. So that means that whenever I come up and I open the door to the lab, that there's actually a little bit of resistance against it because there's so much air being pushed in here that it's, it's actually helping to hold that door closed. When I turn on the switch that turns on my lights and fan before I even walk through the door, I can actually feel air coming out at my feet and around the entire door frame. Uh, that's because air is being pulled in from outside the room. There's a filter on the other side of this box. There's a filter laying down on top of this box. And then this old, all the air gets pulled in and pushed out the HEPA filter. That means that I'm filtering my air twice before it ever comes into my room. And it even has, real quick, I'll show you. We created just a little cardboard flap. That was Ben's addition. Um, I mean, he's all of this is his addition, but I, I really liked this actually because it's a little piece of cardboard, nobody would think much about it. But I can restrict how much air is actually being recirculated inside the room, which means that we can create a more recirculating effect if we want less air being pulled in from outside, or we can open that up and allow more air to be pulled in from outside. I mean, open that up and allow more circulation, close it, and more air is being pulled from outside. We filter the air twice. We use a dust filter on the outside, a, a allergen filter on the top of the fan box, and then the HEPA filter. And those two pre-filters allow me to, to extend the life of my filter um, because they catch all the big particles of dust on the dust filter. Then the allergen filter actually catches a lot of mold spores, bacterial endospores, and anything else that's floating in the air. And then the HEPA filter just gets what's left. That allows me to, to just extend that lifetime. I've actually pushed the lifetime of my filter for a very long time. I constantly check its sterility by putting dishes of agar in front of it, letting them sit for an hour or two, and then closing that up, sealing them, and then letting them grow for a month or so to see if I actually get any growth on them. Uh, rarely do I ever get any growth on them. So uh, again, the new lab is positive pressure just like the old lab. And the way you achieve that is by pushing air in. It's the opposite of my grow room. My grow room is negatively pressured, which means that I take air out and then air just naturally flows back into my grow room. Um, here, we're actually pushing air in, so air just naturally flows out. We have no exhaust fans in the lab. It just, the pressure causes, the pressure differential causes, you know, more air in this lab causes a spillover into the outside realm. Another thing that you want to consider is your shelving. For your laboratory. We actually really like the wooden, wooden shelving. It works really, really well. We just covered it in a nice thick coat of waterproof and wipeable paint. Uh, that has proven to be very effective for us. I actually hate those plastic shelves that we've got over here. Those plastic shelves are hard to clean. They've got grooves everywhere. They're not that cheap compared to wooden shelves. But, you know, if you've got some basic tools and access to wood, you can build shelves about the same price and get a lot more surface area for you to set things on. So we're trying to transition away from those. We have our refrigerator for cold long-term storage. We have, and to slow down any spawn that I may want to hold on to for just a little bit longer. Uh, we have positive pressure in the lab. I've discussed shelving. What else have I discussed? Oh, another must for your lab, or at least for my lab, is music. So. Ben has joked many times about one of the best things he ever did for our company was just putting a Ethernet cable into the downstairs because we don't get very good Wi-Fi down here and then putting speakers assess you know sound system in here so that you know Andrew likes music and Andrew kind of gravitates to where there is music at which means that if there's music in the lab I stay down here a lot longer and I'm much happier. Uh, and when I am happy, I work. And when I'm not happy, I don't work. So that kind of is just the way it goes. The best thing that you can do for yourself is to make your working environment to where you actually enjoy spending time there working, which means that more work gets done because you feel like more work, like you feel like doing more work because it's enjoyable. Uh, same reason why we painted this lab table. 
as you know I've already shown it before it just kind of makes it a more enjoyable environment I prefer white in here for a lot of reasons uh, as far as the paint scheme uh, white shows stuff you know when it's dirty a lot easier than most colors the white balance actually we wanted to do a lot of white in here for the video production because the white balance is a lot better we actually used plastic sheeting on the walls uh, that have the the wooden studs the block walls we just painted with that same wipeable waterproof paint that we painted the shelves other than that guys I mean a lab's pretty simple Mo like most things that I cover in mushroom growing uh, most things are just really really simple it's just about finding a system that works for you one you know positive pressure uh, wipeable paint and plastic plenty of shelving space long-term storage for your cultures uh, plenty of you know working elbow room so you can really work in here a sound system to make life more enjoyable and then just making cleaning easy like 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 I was I've been talking about in the grow room like everything else if you make cleaning easy you will clean more often if you clean more often your lab and your grow room and your whole operation will just work that much better so it's all it's all simple stuff in terms of stocking your grow room you want supplies like plenty of paper towels to clean with uh, isopropyl alcohol 70% not the 90% stuff uh, you want hand sanitizer plenty of dishes if you're doing agar work always keep enough agar on hand that you can work with liquid culture media if you're working with that jars you want plenty of bags I mean it, it's all pretty much just everything you want some things that you may not think of is keeping a notepad and every time you do work we actually track our time Samantha does a very good job of actually writing down the time whenever she and Tim begin work. They come down here, they start work, they tell, they, like I can look back in our production log. Production. Wrong way. But I can go back to February 8th of 2017 and I see that on that day we did 12 beach with one bag that was resealed the lighter test came out clean uh, the lighter test being that we take a lighter and we hold it in front of the filter and if it blows out whenever it's right up on the filter then you know that your fans going really strong so I should be able to put my filter from the end of the work table and it should start to lean like it is right now in the flow and then as I move it closer it will lean more and more and more till it finally gets to the end and blows out that's when I know that my flow is really good and my pre filters don't need to be changed so the lighter test came out okay we ended up miss pulling some spawn from our large rack um, and spawn from the small rack rack got uh, ended up being used so that was the correct spawn <clears throat> we did king black poplar comb tooth beach and uh, Pathfinder oyster all on that same day looks like it for a total of 104 bags on that day that was back before we're doing as much as we are now so all of that really kind of allows us to track who did what how long things took it looks like it took them two hours roughly to do 104 bags yeah two hours and so I mean that's so cool just being able to go back and look back all the way to February of last year and seeing what we did that day and then if we go back to our grow room records we know, we can look back and compare okay well two or three weeks from there we should see the beach bags pulled the pathfinder bags pulled we should see some fruiting we should have a we don't test every single mushroom as it's being pulled off a block but we should have a general idea of how much weight has been pulled from that day making that easy having this right here in the work area rather than trying to write it all down remember it and then go compile it later having it right here means that it's it's easy it's done it gets it gets written down every single time another thing that I like to keep handy in the lab is duster duster gets used just by taking it and blowing 
sometimes we get stuff caught right down here in the wood and this metal rim and this duster just allows us to blow all of that out nothing physical gets put in there like a little we used to use like a little broom and i found that, that little broom I, I just didn't like that anything that makes physical contact with something else is just another place where you can leave bacterial endospores and mold spores and who wants that on the very front of their hepa filter we keep a pair of insulated high temperature gloves for carrying the pressure cooker when it's hot if we need to which i don't suggest doing but if you need to um, unloading the steamer we, we unload it while it's still really hot bring it into the lab uh, and this lab will be able to actually exhaust outside we'll just leave the hepa filter f flowing while the uh, blocks are cooling crack the window and all that hot air will be able to get pushed outside in the old lab we didn't have the window we used to just vent into the grow room which means the grow room had these big temperature spikes i never liked that so this room has kind of become the cadillac of labs now because of just of that one factor you want a sharpie for labeling your bags why don't i just bring you over here with me that way i don't have to keep you know my dad always has said bring your work to you not you to your work and there i was just not listening to him so dad if you're watching I should listen to you more often all right so continuing on i have an alcohol lamp as a backup i don't like using an alcohol lamp i will tell you that the only lab fires i have ever had I've been using an alcohol lamp. When I use propane, or like the welding torches or the plumbing torches, I've never had a lab fire with those. You wanna keep plenty of dishes. I have my liquid culture up here moved in. This is not the way everything's gonna look whenever it's done. You know, we have the refrigerator to move in. We still have to organize everything. So we're, we're just not finished yet, but we're, we're getting there. Plenty of hand sanitizer. A production log, exacto knife. I always keep a screwdriver size for changing out the heating strip on the sealer. The screwdriver is always in here, so it's always easy to get. It means it gets done e often, right? Which is what we want. We want everything to be easy and as close as possible, so that way, when you think of it, it gets done. Because if you wait till later, you're not going to do it. Uh, I keep. Plenty of parafilm for my dishes. I keep Ziploc bags in here always because I like to oftentimes store my dishes in Ziploc bags when I'm going to be using them later. And also, whenever I cool my agar dishes, I'm able to store them in Ziploc bags for a long period of time because Ziploc bags are basically sterile on the inside. I have culture slants for long-term storage. Another thing to keep in your lab is properly fitting gloves. I historically use the extra large. I just get these from Hob or not Hobby Lobby, gosh, uh, Harbor Freight. I get these from Harbor Freight down, uh, down the road from me. I will say that I bought the extra large and thought, well, you know, Samantha can just use those and Tim can just use those and Ben can use those and everybody will be fine even if they're a little bigger. But no, it's actually better to get properly fitting gloves for everyone. So Tim gets, Tim and Ben use the medium duty more often. I think Ben still uses the extra large sometimes, but, and Samantha uses the small. And that just makes life so much easier. Like having those loose gloves, we've been trying to work with those, is just not fun at all. So you, you don't want to do that. Get properly fitting gloves if you can. That's pretty much it. I mean, your tools are basic and you want to just keep your supplies going. I, I buy my, uh, my Petri dishes 500 at a time. So I've got a box of that down here underneath the lab table. So just keeping your room well stocked and keeping things like a production log, you know, your duster, everything within easy reach means that you're going to be cleaning more often, which means your lab stays more sterile. You're managing that contamination, right? And allows you to just really do things as you think of them and in a natural flow. If you'll think about how you do things, what steps you take, and then try to put things into each category of, okay, I take this step, which means I need my tools ready for that. Just thinking three steps ahead. That's another one my dad's saying. I'll always think three steps ahead. Um, which I think a lot of dads, that's their saying. So I think all of us would just 
do a little bit better if we would just listen to our dads more often. Says the father of three. Uh, oh, another nice to have. I love this thing. I got it off Amazon. It's just a pair film dispenser. Whenever I'm doing dishes, I can open this up like so, pull it down, latch that down, cut. Perfect size strip for covering up petri dishes. I think it was, it was expensive. It was $40 on Amazon. But the cool thing about it is that it, it sizes it. I used to use these big pieces of parafilm and my dishes always look sloppy. But now I just take this strip and I'm able to stretch it out over the parafilm. Done. Nice clean lines, nice parafilm. My parafilm lasts a lot longer because I'm not cutting gigantic pieces. So parafilm is your friend. That dispenser makes parafilm your best friend. Well, if you guys have any questions, just uh, please leave them in the comments below. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel if you want to learn more about mushroom growing and how we do things here personally at Mossy Creek Mushrooms. Uh, if you're interested in coming to, becoming a moss back, uh, please check out my consultation page. We will break down and personalize how your op is. You can, we, you can take what we do here and personally apply it to your op and we will help guide you through that process. I'll link my consultation page down below, so please just make sure you check that out. And uh, as always, remember guys, keep spawning culture. Oh, <laughs>